hearts magnify the name of the Lord. Let Mount Zion praise the name of the Lord. Let Mount Zion praise the name of the Lord. Let Mount Zion praise the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody came this morning, being the first Sunday of the year. Hallelujah. You came in with a praise. You came in with a worship. Uh, you've been through so much this week. Amen. Being the first week of the year. But I do believe that when we come into the presence of, the God, of God, of the Almighty God, it doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter where you've been. Uh, it doesn't matter how much is happening in your life. He deserves the glory. So I'm going to ask Mount Zion to just lift your hands, lift your hearts, lift everything this morning. Lift your voice to heaven and praise the name of the Lord. Just lift your voice and praise the name of the Lord. Praise him on the organ. Praise him on the bass. Praise him on the drums. Praise the name of the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the name of the Lord. 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 Let Zion magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Jehovah. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you, Jehovah. My God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. Oh, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who deserve it this morning to be alive who think in themselves that you are so worthy that it's a must that you stay alive. You're so worthy that you have done nothing wrong, uh, but you have breath this morning. You're so worthy that God have done nothing for you. But if you are that person, uh, glory to God, then you're all right. But if you're like me who know that I'm not worthy of the mercies of God, if you're like me who know uh, that I'm so undeserving, uh, but he gave his only begotten son, uh, that's why I praise him. I shouldn't be alive. I should be dead and gone. 2019 shouldn't have seen me. 2020 shouldn't have seen me. But I'm here today because God kept me. 
I get the chance to praise him. I will praise him. Ah, oh, glory. Hallelujah. I just want to jump right into the word and keep going because there's lots to say. But I feel like somebody have came in this morning. You've come into the sanctuary and you're holding back on God. You're holding back on the praises that belongs to God. Ah, glory to God. Ah, so I want somebody just for one more minute to take that chance to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sickness didn't take me out. I'm here today because he kept me, because he kept me, 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 hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands to you. No other help I know. God, right now, I pray that you stretched out over Mount Zion. Stretch out over this sanctuary. Stretch out over your people. Ah, oh, God, a blessings like they have never seen before. Signs and wonders, miracles like they have never seen before. A release, God Almighty, like they have never seen before. Hallelujah. Over your sanctuary, Almighty God. Over your people. Break, hallelujah, every chain, every bondage. Oh, God, every pain, every headache, every disappointment. Break it in the name of Jesus. Ah, glory. And let them know that you are God alone. You are God alone. And we praise you. We praise you and we magnify you. And we give you thanks. In Jesus' name. 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 Ah, oh, glory. Hallelujah. If you grab your Bibles with me. Hallelujah. I was going to read from the New Life Translation, but we'll just read from the King James Version so you can follow. And as I was seeking the Lord for word, um, uh, this word came to me. I know it's, Sometimes they're not very familiar and it seems like they don't fit into the season. But when God give a word, because I try so many other routes to go around it. But when he gives a word, I think we just need to obey and go with that word. And he brought me into 2 Samuel chapter 21. And, and it, the Holy Ghost, you know, it was speaking to me and there's one thought that came to me that we should not hold on to dead stuff. Uh, but, but the Holy Ghost said, tell them that it hurts, but let it go. It hurts, but let it go. Don't hold on to dead stuff. Don't hoard dead stuff in your life. Uh, there comes a time when you just have to let go and allow God to have his way. Uh, glory because then if you hold on to the things that are dead it start contaminating you it start bringing you into that season of no return into that point of even you are getting sick because you're hanging around with dead stuff uh, so it came up to me as 
in, in 2 Samuel chapter 21, and you can read with me from verses 1 through 6, and we'll jump down to verse 9 and 10, just to get the context of uh, this message this morning. Uh, it's about uh, Rispa, Saul's concubine, one of Saul's concubine, who's uh, the Gibeonites, they made a deal with them, with the Israelites. And Saul broke that deal, that covenant, and his children had to pay for it, and his grandchildren. And, and, but Rispa did not want to let go. Even after two of the sons were dead, she hung out with them. And God is saying this morning, you have to let go. You have to let go. So before you're seated, just read, let's read together from chapter 21 from verses 1 through 6 and we'll jump down to verse 9 and 10 then there was a famine the days of David three years year after year and David inquired of the Lord and the Lord answered it is the it is Saul and for his bloody house because he has slain the Gibeonites What shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement that he may be blessed the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shall kill any man in Israel. And he said, What? And they answered the king, the man that consumed us and that died. Let seven men of his house. Verse 9. And he delivered them unto the hands of the Gibeonites. And they hang them in the hills before the Lord. And they fell all seven together and were put in the first day in the beginning of the barley harvest. And Rispa, the daughter of Ai, took sackcloth and spread it from the beginning of the harvest until water dripped from her. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. First of all, I want to greet uh, this whole house of faith. I want to greet uh, the elders, ministers, uh, to the missionaries, evangelists, the wonderful saints. Welcome back, Sister Dylene, after losing two of your family members uh, on the same day. And she's back in the house of the Lord this Thank morning you. to praise God with us. Um, to all our visiting friends. This morning, as I said, as I was looking on a word and we we're entering into consecration and we were, I was just seeking the face of God and it's something came to me that sometime we hold on to things for too long and it caused us problems. It caused us a uh, heavy burden. It caused us to go through pain and suffering. And, and the Holy Ghost says sometime we must give up the things that hurt us, even though it hurt us to give it up. We just have to give it up uh, because it's not everything that we lose in our life is a complete loss because some things are just keeping us in bondage. It's just keeping us from the release that God wants upon our life. It could be a relationship uh, that weighs negatively on you. It could be anger uh, that constantly telling you to retaliate. Uh, it, it could be negative self-talk that constantly tell you you can't do it, you can't make it. It could be guilt of the past. It could be excuses that we make of the past. Uh, um, we, we were told last week, amen, that um, 
the children of Israel, they, had some, they made some serious mistakes and it led them into the wilderness and they were there for a while. But even after a while, God told them that it's time to leave. After a while, he told Moses, tell them it's time to leave. It's time to possess the promised land. Uh, it's time to enter into what I have promised you. Uh, we have to recognize as children of God when it's time to move on. Uh, we have to recognize as children of God when to let go and when to move forward. Sometimes it's a challenge as a church and as children of God when and how to move on because we have that tendency of justifying why we're at where we're at and why we do what we do. And even God, although God is saying you need to let go and you need to move forward, although it's killing you to stay in that same position, that same place, because you're familiar with that situation and that place. Because you profess that you love what is going on. You refuse from moving forward. But God says, although it hurts sometimes, you have to let it go. Well, Howard, although sometimes it feels like it's going to kill you to let this thing go, this person go. But God says sometimes for the benefit of your soul, you have to let it go. You have to move on. We are at the first Sunday of the new year. A new decade. And, and, and God is here this morning and he's trying to tell us that you can't hold on to the things of the past. You can't hold on to the things that keep you going around in circle. Some of you at the beginning of the year, you make resolution uh, that you will do certain things. God, I'm going to serve you better. God, I'm going to go to church more often. God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But as I read the story and see what God was trying to tell me or uh, through the story that sometimes the decisions that we make uh, sometimes the covenants that we make uh, sometimes the promises that we make whether it's to an individual or it's to God uh, if we don't keep those promises, it has a consequence uh, it has sometimes a negative effect uh, and that's why I'm here this morning to encourage you as children of God not to preach down and, and shut to you this morning but to tell you that sometimes that the covenants that we make the promises that we make and sometimes it's not even us in this generation sometimes it's covenants that was made generations before us and sometimes we feel the consequences sometimes our children feel the consequences of those it was so that in this story and as I go through it, that God is trying to tell us that it's important to plan. It's important to have vision. And it's important that as we go through life that we try to stay on top of things. But God wants us that as we plan and we have vision, that we make sure that we seek him for the manifestation of those vision. And as we seek God for the manifestation of those visions, we pray for him to send a release upon his people, to release us. And, I, and as I prayed, I said, God, release us from what he said. I want to release you from the past, from Egypt mentality. I want to release you from bondage. And he said, I want to release you of the presence uh, of what your current situation is. Because I promise you that you're going to go into Canaan, into the land that's flowing with milk and honey but there are some situation that's within you right now that needs to be released and he said I'm not only going to release you from or release you off but I'm going to release you into your future I'm going to allow you to walk into that which I have promised you and no longer stay in bondage because I have promised you that I'm going to move you forward Somebody this morning, we need a divine release from God uh, in this generation that we're in. Uh, we need a divine release, uh, just like what was upon Jesus himself when he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, uh, to, uh, to send uh, or to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance uh, to the captive, uh, the recovering of sight. Uh, 
to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bound, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We need that release on Mount Zion. In 2020, he said, I'm here to release you a divine release, uh, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Divine deliverance. Uh, you're going through some famines in your life, uh, some things that are holding you back. Uh, but God says, uh, as we enter this week of consecration, now is the time to seek my face uh, and to find out what went wrong. Uh, now is the time to come before me and stay before me. Now is the time to figure out uh, what is going on uh, because David uh, saw a famine on the land uh, for year after year after year uh, for three years straight uh, there was a famine uh, and David went to God uh, because David says this is must be uh, something from the Lord uh, because I know what Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28 says uh, that I'm going to be blessed in the city that I'm going to be blessed in the field that I'm going to be blessed in my going out uh, and in my coming in uh, and that if I serve God uh, and if I keep the word uh, if I keep the covenant uh, he's going to release a blessing so this famine uh, is must be of God something must be wrong who this morning is in the house and you're experiencing some spiritual famine some physical famine in your life dryness and drought ah glory God is saying Mount Zion I'm calling you into a time of consecration because something has went wrong somewhere it doesn't mean that it has to be this this generation it doesn't mean it has to be this group but somewhere somewhere something went wrong so then I went back in the word and I start researching the word and I look at the word and God, you said that you're going to release Mount Zion. And you said according to Joel chapter 2, that you're going to bring back uh, that which the conqueror has eaten, that which the caterpillar has eaten, that which the locust has eaten. You said you're going to restore everything. You said you're going to look uh, and you're going to pour out your spirit uh, upon all flesh uh, and the sons and daughters shall prophesy. And the young man uh, uh, shall have vision. And the old man shall have dream. He said, in Mount Zion, I'm going to bring deliverance. I'm going to pour out. In that day, I'm going to pour out. I'm going to pour out. But he said, there are some things uh, that are weighing you down. There are some things uh, that are holding you back. Uh, that's why Paul says uh, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, uh, he said, just lay aside uh, every weight uh, and every sin uh, that so easily turn you off uh, that's so easily attached to you uh, that so easily hold you back uh, so you can run with patience the race that is set before you Mount Zion he said you gotta go back at the beginning of the year you're seeking God for release but he said, yes, the release is at hand. But some of us have to go back to that place and find out where we went wrong with God. That promise that we have made and we broke it. We said, God, you know, you see what I'm going through. But if you deliver me from it, I'm going to praise you. Comes what may. And then trouble come upon you. And you praise God. And he took you out of that. And once you're in the land of freedom, you said you forget about God. You forgot who brought you out of Egypt. You forgot where you're coming from and where you should have been. But remind me, dear Lord, of where it went wrong. Remind me. So he said, tell them to search again. David went and he inquired of the Lord. And then when I search the scriptures, I realize it's going back way from Joshua. God told Israel, Mount Zion, that I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. And I said, God, what a way to tell us. He said, 
Israel, I'm going to bring you out. And I'm going to bring you into Canaan. A land that's flown with milk and honey. He said, I'm going to drive out the Hittites, the Amorites, the, all the tites. I'm going to drive them out. And if we don't seek the face of God, that's why sometimes we make mistakes. Uh, because Joshua... Ah, uh, he was tricked into making this covenant, uh, this deal, uh, because the Gibeonites, uh, which is also known as the Amorites, uh, they knew uh, that God already uh, delivered uh, Mount Zion uh, or delivered Israel. Uh, when they came out, uh, they heard of the goodness of God. Uh, they heard how God gave Israel Jericho, uh, and they heard what Rahab has done uh, uh, to get some uh, uh, guidance and protection. And they saw how God uh, had delivered Israel, Ahai to Israel, uh, uh, glory. And guess what? Uh, the Gibeonites would be next. Uh, so the Gibeonites, uh, let me tell somebody, they came up with a trick, uh, a plan, uh, because they were a mighty army. But they said, we can't fight uh, against the people of God. We can't fight against Israel because God is with them. Uh, so they came up with this plan, church. And they decide with deception to dress uh, like they're coming from a far journey. Tattered shoes, uh, tattered clothes, uh, tattered socks, uh, tattered donkey, tired horse. Uh, and they came over. And they came up to the children of Israel, to Judah, to, to, to Joshua. And they said to Joshua, we're coming from afar and we're asking you to make a treaty with us, protect us. But Joshua did not realize that this was just their name, the promised land that God has given, that they have to annihilate and destroy. But God said, Joshua, you did not seek me before you made that decision. Now you just protect the enemy. Now you can't harm them. Now you can't destroy them. Now you have to honor your covenant because you made it up on my word. You made it up on my name. And then guess what? Now they just had to use the Gibeonites as slaves because they couldn't kill them anymore. But that's Joshua. And we saw Saul came on board. And years later, Saul became the king. And Saul understood uh, the fact that these are tricksters. Uh, and you should not be among the land of Israel. You should not be in the land that's flowing with milk and honey. It was not a part of the promise. Uh, and, uh, and Saul, in a zeal uh, for the children of Israel, said, I'm going to go undercover. I'm going to annihilate. Uh, I'm going to destroy. Uh, and God didn't do anything. God allow him to do a little bit of the destroying. Sometime your four parents had made decisions. Decisions that's affecting you today. Your mama and your father had made decisions that's affecting you today. Generations upon generations, 400 years later. Then God, here comes David. And God said, David said, God, this must be something wrong. I don't understand. I'm following Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I'm trying to walk in your will. My ah, God, but there's a blessing that's withheld. Somebody is saying, God, I'm trying to walk in your will, but I'm telling you to follow your footsteps on where you have been and what you have done wrong. And you have to go back and you have to say, God, Lord, forgive me of my trespasses and my sin. You can't go on and pretend like it never happened. Don't pretend like it never happened. As I said, I'm here to talk to you that it doesn't matter. Make your decisions wisely because it could be generations later. Somebody's going to feel it. And God said, you're in a new year. You better make your decisions wisely, Mount Zion, because it could be an adverse effect for generations to come. He said, you better start praising me the way I ought to. And that a generation after you will have no clue of how to praise me, of how to pray, of how to worship, of how to seek my face. So he said, start seeking my face. 
It's a new year. Seek my face. It's a new beginning. So David seek the face of God. And God said, David, my child, it's because of Saul's bloody house. Yes. Saul and his yes. zeal, he started to kill some of the Gibeonites. He had broken the covenant that Joshua had made in your name, Lord. If you read back in Joshua chapter 9, you'll see where the covenant was made. And it was all done in Jesus' name. And God said, Josh, David, he have broken that covenant. But the, the, the Gibeonites, what I love about the scripture and the story, when David said, the Lord has told me, when he went to seek the Gibeonites, he said, the Lord has told me that we have done wrong to you. We have broken the covenant. What can I do for you? The Gibeonites said, we have no right to kill anyone in Israel. It is not the enemy's duty to touch any of Zion people because God has given you the territory. It's rightfully yours. And the devil can't. So he had to ask David permission. He said, David, I have no right to touch the people of Israel. But Saul's house, can I have seven men from Saul's house? I'm asking you permission because blood must be shed for the atonement. Lord, they have done some things that are wrong and blood must be shed. Just like Christ, something went wrong and he had to go on the cross. Blood had to be shed. And we saw, saints, I'm coming down, but it, I saw where David said, I'm going to give you permission to take seven of Saul's men from his house. Ah, glory in. And they said, we're going to bring them down to Gibeon. And we're going to hang them, execute them in public so that everyone can see that there's an atonement was made. Yeah, glory to God. And when they did that, the Bible told me that two of those men was Saul's actual son and five was his grandson, his daughter's five sons. And they all went and they were hanged in the public. But the Bible said Rispha, which is the concubine of, of, of Saul, uh, she went uh, and she would not uh, allow the birds of the year nor anything, the beasts of the field, to call my these dead bodies she stayed with the dead bodies she surrounded the dead bodies she fan off the flies she stopped the birds from coming ah, but God said it's time to let go of the dead stuff it's time to get rid of it she hung on to the dead bodies but God said once that atonement was made, rain came down from heaven. There was the beginning of harvest. God opened the floodgates. Mount Zion, once you make it right, God will open the floodgates. And every problem, every situation, he will just start pouring out. Pour out. I will open the floodgates of heaven. I will open the windows. He said, Zion, make it right. Make it right. I look at the word release according to the to dictionary.com. And the word release means free. To be free from confinement. To be free from bondage. To be free from pain. To be free from obligation. To let go. To release a prisoner. To release someone from their debt. To set free that which restrain you, to hold you fast, and to let go and give up, to relinquish, to surrender. Release. Release. God said, I'm going to release. After you make it right, I'm going to release upon you. After you make it right, after you go down in prayer and fasting, I'm going to release. Ah, Shatan Dolomosata. You're in pain. You're in bondage. Because somebody has done wrong. Somebody has messed up. Somebody. Ah, glory. But God says, make it right. And I'm going to release upon you. I'm going to open the floodgates. I'm going to pour out from heaven. Financial blessing. Healing. Deliverance, uh, guidance, uh, breakthrough in your life, uh, spiritual breakthrough.
physical breakthrough, emotional breakthrough, strongholds, deliverance. Atonement must be made. You must make it right. Ah, Satan. Stand with me, Zion. Somebody must make it right. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You could cry over it. You could cry over it. You could guard the dead body. You could guard the dead situation. But God said you gotta let go. You gotta let go. You gotta let go. It's gonna contaminate you. It's gonna pollute you. Let it go. When David heard what she was doing, David went and took the bodies along with Saul and Jonathan and buried and said, get rid of the deadness. Get rid of the dead stuff. God said, Mount Zion, it's time to let go. It may hurt. She loved her son. She loved her children. But God said, let it go. Atonement must be made. Let it go. They might bite you, but let it go. They hurt you, but let it go. They step on your feet, but let it go. Let it go. God said, let it go. Let it go. Let it go, Vanji. Fresh beginning. New walk. New talk. Fresh release from heaven. I'm going to restore. He said, when you let it go, I'm going to release you from your problems, your hurt, your imprisonment, your suffering of the past. I'm going to release you of your sickness, of your pain, of famine and disease. He said, I'm going to, I will release you into provision, miracles, signs and wonders, prosperity over your life. He said, this is the year of release. So I say unto you, Mount Zion, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace 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 for your journey peace for 2020 peace for your walk peace for your talk peace give you peace I release upon your life. He said, a total release upon your life. He said, let it go. It hurts, but let it go. The Lord bless you, Mount Zion. The Lord bless you, Mount Zion. This is the time. There's seven days ahead of you to find out what went wrong, to find out where it went wrong to find out with whom it went wrong and make an atonement and fix it because God is about to send a release to open the reins. You don't want to be the outcast when God is releasing his blessing. So God says that word this morning, it might hurt, but let it go. Let it go. Don't hold on to the dead stuff. Don't hoard the dead stuff in your life. It's just gonna hurt you. Let it go. Let it go. Start fresh. I forgive you. I forget it. I don't want to know about it anymore. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. Hey Israel, move forward. Forward for God. Fight like soldier man. Pick up your armor. Pick up your sword. We're marching in the name of the Lord. Somebody, victory ahead. Victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus. Victory ahead. Mama, mama, satan, dolobo, satan. Make dolobo, haya. 
a release upon your people a divine breakthrough upon your people in the name of Jesus 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 Ah, the famine is ended. Ah, the drought, the famine, the whole back, it's over. God said there is a release of the rains. There's a release from heaven because you have made it right, because you have started it right, because you have in, inquired of me and you have done it right. God said, I release upon you, Mount Zion, in this time, in this season, I release you in the name of Jesus. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Every one of you, your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. Ah, the old man's gonna continue to have some dreams. Ah, the young ones are gonna have some vision. But not just vision, God said it's gonna be manifested and it's gonna come with an outpour and a release. God bless you as you continue to serve them in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Hey, glory. Ah.